The West Wing drama that played out today uh, when Kanye West met with the uh, president in the Oval Office. I want to play a clip. Don Lemon is with us and get your thoughts. Uh, here's something. Here's some of the stuff that uh, Kanye West and the president said. Listen to this. If he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes, the best factories, and we have to make our core be in power. We have to bring jobs into America. I don't answer questions in simple sound, sound bites. You, you are tasting a fine wine. It has multiple <laughs> notes to it. The liberal will try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. So when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, Oh, but he's racist. You think racism can control me? Oh, that don't stop me. That's an invisible wall. Would you build a trap door that if you mess up and you accidentally something happens, you fall and you end up next to the Unabomber? Let me give this guy a hug right here. I love this guy right here. Yeah, amen. Yes. He did most of the talking in the Oval Office. Uh, Don, what did you think? I, Wolf. I listen. I don't. There, I have no animosity for um, Kanye West. I'm just going to be honest, and I may get in a lot of trouble for it. I feel actually feel bad for him. What I saw was a minstrel show today. Him in front of all of these white people, mostly white people, embarrassing himself, and embarrassing Americans, but mostly African Americans, because every, every one of them is sitting either at home or with their phones watching this cringing. I couldn't even watch it. I had to turn the television off because it was so hard to watch. Him sitting there being used by the President of the United States, the President of the United States exploiting him and, I don't mean this in a disparaging way, exploiting someone who needs help, who needs to back away from the cameras, who needs to get off stage, who needs to deal with his issues. And if anyone around him cares about him, the family that he mentioned today, or whomever, his managers, maybe some other people who are in the music business who know him, they need to grab him and snatch him up and get Kanye together because Kanye needs help. And this has nothing to do with being liberal or conservative. This is to do with honesty. And we have to stop pretending, sitting here on these CNN panels or on whatever network panels, and pretending like this is normal. And let's have this conversation about Kanye West and what he's in. Who cares? Why are you sending cameras to the Oval Office for Kanye West? Did you send cameras to the Oval Office and carry it live when Common visited the White House? Common visited the White House and did a beautiful um, poem, spoken word. It talked about how black people are kings and queens, how we need to rise up and do better. He didn't disparage anybody. He didn't speak in non sequiturs. He didn't do anything awful. And you know, the only people who criticized him and the only people who really covered it were Sean Hannity and his band of hypocrites who are now, uh, who, who are now applauding Kanye West, the same people that many uh, in that group called the N-word because of Taylor Swift and because of George Bush. And now, all of a sudden, he is the person who represents the African-American community. He doesn't. We need to take the cameras away from Kanye and from a lot of this craziness that happens in the White House, because it is not normal, and we need to stop sitting here pretending that it's normal. This was an embarrassment. Kanye's mother is rolling over in her grave. I spoke to one of her friends today, or texted with one of her friends today from Chicago, Donda's friends. I used to live there. I know him. She said Donda would be, would, would be embarrassed by this. She would be terribly disturbed by this. And Kanye has not been the same since his mother died. He kept talking today about, oh, uh, I put the hat on and the hat made me feel strong and wearing a cape. He needs a father figure. He needs someone to help him and to guide him, and he needs a hug more than anything. Kanye, back away from the cameras, go get some help, and then come back and make your case. Nobody, if you want to be conservative, if you want to support Donald Trump, that is your business. But as you're doing it, have some sense with it. Make sense. Educate yourself. You know, you know Don, we just played a one-minute clip of that, uh, of that exchange but it really went on for more than half an hour if you watched the Talking whole thing. Talking about hydrogen, the last time we really talked about hydrogen, seriously, oh, the, you remember that? The Hindenburg. So, Kanye, come on, man. Like, stop embarrassing yourself. And it's not even that. 
We're doing it because everyone wants to watch him. We're watching someone's demise in front of our eyes. And, and the president as well. The office is sacred. Can you imagine if President Barack Obama had Kanye West or any rapper or any person, entertainer in the Oval Office who said MF? Can you imagine? Our, everybody's heads would be exploding, not just over at Fox News, not just the conservatives. Everybody's heads would be expo exploding, saying, what's happening? And this is not the first time that Donald Trump has denigrated that office. He brought Ted Nugent in, who uh, d said some very disparaging things about the former president. And uh, you Google it, and you'll see. Had him there in the Oval Office. So this is not the first time that he's had someone that denigrates that office, that didn't live up to the respect of that office in there. And today was another example of that. He is disrespecting the Oval Office more than Kanye did because he invited Kanye in and exploited it. All right. You know, David Swerdlick, what did yeah. you think? Okay, so I think Don is on to something, Wolf, and I just want to focus on one little piece of what Don said, because there's one data point I just want to drill down on, and that is this. Look, Don said, if Kanye West wants to be conservative, he can be. There is absolutely a robust discussion being had, has been had, will continue to be had in the African-American community about political ideology. There is not a monolith in the black community. But a lot of what you hear Kanye West saying today and what he has said recently is about critiquing President Obama. I want to point to one number, because this is always pointed to by Kanye and other people around him, about black unemployment. Uh, the unemployment rate for African-Americans went down from 7.8 to 6% under Trump. That's good. Trump should brag about that. Mm -hmm. But under President Obama, the only African-American president, it went from 12.7 to 7.8, almost a five percentage point drop. So if there's a discussion to be had about what Republicans or Democrats or African-Americans or white politicians are doing for black people, let's have it, but let's not have it on the basis of bogus information. Gloria. Well, and I, I want to add to something that, that Don said and, and agree with him about the president using, uh, using Kanye. He thinks the president, uh, the president thinks he's boosting his popularity with African Americans. We haven't seen that. Um, and he thinks he's good for him. Uh, but he sat there and smiled the entire time. He was clearly uncomfortable. But when Kanye dropped the F-bomb and all the rest, um, he didn't do anything about it. He didn't say, stop, this is the Oval Office. We don't do that in the Oval Office. And this also happened on a day when you had thousands of people, thousands of people, losing their homes Thank in you, Gloria. Florida. In Thank Florida. you, Gloria. And instead, the president is sitting and meeting yep. with Kanye West because it makes him look good. I know they're supposed to discuss criminal justice reform, et cetera, et cetera. But it was like watching a train wreck because it was, and the president just sat there. I remember when presidents used to say, you know what, you need to put on your jacket to go into the Oval Office. Andy uh, Cardin yeah. used to say that. Right, yeah. Yeah. exactly. And but so, Let me just jump in here. I'm sorry to hog this panel, but I, it, this has gotten me. So we need to stop putting people like Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. And again, no shade to Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian helped to get one person free. This is not some comprehensive overhaul of the criminal justice system. This president loves celebrities. And so that helped. But Kim Kardashian brought no experts in that I know of, no one who knows about criminal justice reform, no one who can overhaul the system, nothing. She sat there, she, uh, another celebrity with another celebrity at another time in a administra uh, uh, former administration, we would have criticized this and said that he was disparaging the office. So let's not pretend we should stop putting Kanye West and Kim Kardashian on the same plane as Kamal Khashoggi, who deserves much more coverage today yeah, than Kanye absolutely. West. Absolutely. And the people who are down uh, in Florida and in the panhandle who are dealing with a devastating storm. We should be focusing on them instead of Kanye West in the Oval Office that nobody cares about and he has no credence and no credibility in the black community on these issues.